result, the, the health IoT data is periodically collected from the IoT sensors and uh, too many, the update of the IoT data in the network, the leads to the, the network traffic, the congestion, while the reducing this update uh, caused the, the outdated the value of the health information. So in order to evaluate the timeliness of this health information, uh, age of information can be evaluated for the performance metric of the health information. Uh, furthermore, uh, the regarding the, regarding the net network, the reconfiguration coverage mapping uh, uh, according to the varying network topology over over time uh, with with the, the changing user distribution and clustering uh, we can reconfigure the network with the transport mean because, uh, due to the uh, thanks to the the mobility and portability of the NIB solutions so as conclusion uh, in this project, we investigate the feasibility of NIB-based network optimization to support smart health IoT services in rural areas. So we consider mathematical modeling uh, of the user distribution and data model, formulate the network deployment problem, and uh, found the proposed iterative solution. As a future, future work, we can consider the study on coexistence with a conventional uh, cellular network and uh, multi-purpose interoperability with the sensing, radar, and localization applications. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Park, for that presentation. And indeed, there will be an opportunity to learn more about uh, the network in a box to provide health services in remote areas. We'll now move to our second presenter, who will be Dr. Lawal. Dr. Lawal, over to you, please. Thank you very much. Um, our protocol is observed. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I want to appreciate um, the Connect to Recover Initiative Dex for this very wonderful um, uh, um, forum for me to help probably um, find ways of adopting adaptation and adoption of United Nations Sustainable Development Goal in Africa, which is just somewhat eight, ways, eight years away from uh, now. So how to fast track, um, you know, meeting those goals. And of interest to us is, uh, of course, um, helped the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3, which is out for all, um, for all ages. Um, the logo there, which is specifically for these um, um, research, is like finding a nexus between medicine practices, the medical uh, um, 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 uh, uh, practitioner, and communications on the other hand, how to find nexus, how to bring about telemedicine, as DH means satellite for digital health in the health sector. And we feel that could help fast track with telemedicine. It could also help could be finding solution to medical tourism, which is very prevalent in Africa, exploiting communication satellite technologies. Because uh, when you look at the issue of unconnected people uh, in the world, a large chunk of that number resides in Africa. Um, of course, we'll be looking at the research team cuts across people in the industry and academia. As a matter of fact, I'm in the industry and at the same time in the academia, trying to find nexus in terms of what is learned in the classroom and what goes out there um, in the industry. Um, we have a um, diverse group of people from the academia, from the industry, um, and of course, from public sector too, who are actually in the policy making uh, um, 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 sector, which is quite key to what we're doing in trying to help develop not just regulations and standards, but of course, framework for the 
adoption and adaptation of telemedicine, in particular in teaching hospitals that actually produce young doctors for us. Some of them, when you talk about telemedicine, it's a new term to them. So finding a way to have this framework in their um, study curricula is also key, which is part of a recommendation. Um, quickly, because we truly don't have time, um, Nigeria in particular, um, healthcare sector struggles with brain drain and insufficient infrastructure. As a result of this, affluent Nigerians choose to receive medical treatment in more developed countries. Medical tourism costs Nigerian economy in the neighborhood of about 1.3 billion annually. Health service delivery is often poor to Nigerians who cannot afford to be treated abroad. So this research aimed to implement a robust network design to exploit the application of communication satellites to deliver broadband, broadband for telemedicine services in designated rural communica uh, communities and internally displaced persons camps, which represent vulnerable people too as well. So also evaluate the acceptability, utility, and adoption of very small aperture terminal, um, customer premise equipment for delivery of satellite services, you get it for internet, for telemedicine, delivering uh, using a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mobile application, which is currently available in Google, Google Free Store. Make recommendation as appropriate to relevant authorities and stakeholders on visa-based telemedicine research findings to drive digital health inclusion in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Now, um, the research draws on mixed methodology, quantitatively and qualitatively, um, comprising of case studies, surveys, covering interviews, and actual research of deploying real um, pilot case study to um, help determine how adaptable is the mobile health application that we call one-to-one -one app with two versions for patients and doctors is in terms of um, applicability of satellite technology for telemedicine services. So a total of over the six months period, a total of 766 patients receive medical attention using the Start Life for Digital Health Medical Outreach Program. 81.8% of patients and medical personnel who participated in our survey strongly agreed that the one-to-one -one mobile health application provided an acceptable way to deliver healthcare services and reduce medical tourism from rural areas to urban centers, including outside the shores. The one-to-one -one M Health application software has been made available to Google Store free. Communication satellites network can deliver services in areas with little or no terrestrial mobile networks to fast track UN SDG Go 3 on health. But robust networks require taking into account equipment sizing at both ends, whether from the gateway as represented by teleport of the satellite communication service provider and the CPE at the end of the user, you get it, which of course you have professional tools for doing that in the link project analysis to help determine the aperture of the antenna that could actually take a dedicated bandwidth required from a star hub topology in delivering communication satellite end to end. Then of course, major challenges faced during the adoption of telemedicine in Nigeria are language barriers and low literacy levels, especially in underserved communities. Then of course, based on what we did too in IDP camps, we also identified poor sanitary health conditions and inadequate health education in IDP camps has a major cause of prevailing health conditions at the camps. Accessibility to IDP camps is poorly regulated and poses security challenges to the inhabitants of the camp. Um, part of our research finding was actually production of four papers in conference proceedings and journals. Um, we have um, a digital, one of the papers, Digital Health Inclusion, 
a pilot study of health services deployment using communication satellite for the underserved in Nigeria, submitted to International Journal for Telemedicine and Applications, uh, still yet to receive feedback on that. Overview of satellite communications and its application in telemedicine for the underserved in Nigeria, um, just presented on the 17th of November, 2022 at Maldives virtually. It's been, um, it will be published in IEEE Explore. The third one was review of telemedicine and its potential in developing countries. It's been accepted and we presented on the 9th, August 2022, Kaula Lumpur virtually. It's also been rewritten in IET template and we have signed IET assignment copyright for publication in IET Explore. And the last one, the fourth one is internally displaced persons. IDPs in Abuja, an overview of health situation and solution. Submitted and has been published with International Journal of Health, Safety and Environment on the 15th of October, 2022. Now, um, recommendations. First, from government and policies maker, sensitizing the public stakeholders, health institutions, teaching hospitals, African Regional Office of World Health Organization benefits of adopting digital health, especially in university teaching hospitals and other related health organizations to increase its acceptance rate and adoption in the country and continent at large. Framework and policies at local, state, national, and regional level are required to drive implementation. On the side of what we also um, 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 discovered. The federal government of Nigeria needs to invest heavily in four key branches of medicine that accounts for 60% of medical tourism. And these are oncology, orthopedics, nephrology, and cardiology. Statlight-based solutions can be utilized also by the emergency management agency and other emergency and disaster management agencies to deliver healthcare services to Nigerian citizens during disaster and emergency situation. In Nigeria recently, we, 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 we had flood situation, eroding all of the terrestrial mobile infrastructure that you have, particularly in Lokuja, where you have the two rivers, River Niger and River Benue meeting. There was um, 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 a, a gateway opened in Cameroon that eroded cities. Now, in such situation, you can actually utilize, you know, mobile VSAT system to deliver, you know, not just telemedicine services, you know, communication services for people to find their loved ones to even know where they are, beyond just offering food mattresses that we've seen in the last two years. These are some of the recommendations we've also made to institutions. To foster inclusion of IDPs in health insurance schemes, which is available, a comprehensive database should be created for these citizens along with other palliative measures. Um, yes, that's on the side of government policy makers. Then secondly, we also look at telemedicine researchers and software and hardware designer driving e-health facilities. The video call feature of the one-to-one -one mobile health application was essential for physical examination in telemedicine. So this feature is highly recommended for developers of telemedicine software. Telemedicine services, again, can only work with sufficient bandwidth to avoid jitter, to truly have you know, true quality of experience. So this should be taken into account when designing a telemedicine network architecture. Language translation features should be incorporated in mobile health application to bridge the language and literacy gap in rural communities. Hardware designers should consider implementing e-health facilities with minimal power consumption for optimal usage of facilities using green power technologies. We're blessed with abundance of you know, sunshine in Africa. So this could help you know, complement the inadequacies of you know, public um, mains from public um, agencies supplying power. Yes, it is a very big issue in rural communities where you don't even find you know, um, um, electricity. And of course, in conclusion, telemedicine serves as a means to transcend geography, time, 
social and cultural barriers to healthcare delivery in line with attainment of United Nations Development Goal 3. Mobile health applications with audio, video, and test capabilities can be leveraged to provide telemedicine services in both urban and rural locations using VSAT-based internet. Language barriers encountered during this project was resolved by employing support staff who are not only fluent in English, but also in the local languages of the communities visited. However, we are completing language translation features for the future telemedicine software, which is highly recommended and is part of our future activity, which is currently ongoing. We have made the one-to-one -one mobile healthcare application available on Google Play Store, underscoring the importance of digital mobile apps in telemedicine drive and adoption, and in particular, you know, content creation, not just availability of um, internet access. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nawal, for highlighting the role of telemedicine and also drawing our attention to the need to strengthen the infrastructure to deliver and extend health services to all. We'll now move on to our third presenter, Dr. Henry. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, good afternoon. If I, may be, if I may be permitted to follow the protocol as established, um, I will continue. Um, my project today is uh, to demonstrate the use of telemedicine in the management of chronic diseases in small island developing states, since a case study in Dominica. Throughout my discussion, we will uh, look at our research team um, I will introduce the project and we will go through the research methodology, um, the research findings and the outcomes, recommendations and conclusion. The research team. Let me say that the ITU, I would say, is one of our main team members. Without the ITU support and Connect to Recover support, this project would, would not be possible. So let me put them at the top of the list as uh, one of our main team members. Uh, myself, I am an ophthalmologist, uh, medical practice, practitioner as well. Um, I work with the AMedic Inc. Um, let me say that um, Ms. Loda, um, she was the project manager. Believe it or not, putting together such a project it requires the support of administrative support um, and you know all hands on deck. We also had members of the One Good Deed Foundation, which is a not-for-profit organization. They, too, played a significant role in, in the project. Um, we had um, from Optifam Eye Center as well. We had members of the All Saints University, um, mainly with statisticians. We had um, students who helped us put together the data and the, um, to ensure everything went well. Dominica is an island is called a nature island in the Caribbean. Uh, we are not exempt from suffering from health issues. We have had to deal with uh, problems of hurricanes, climate change, and the problem of COVID-19. Many patients could not access the emergency rooms because of the high contagious na nature of COVID-19 because um, so they had to, they, they, they suffered many complications because they were not able to access the health facilities. So uh, CARICOM in 2001 uh, decided that the health of a, a, a region is the wealth of a region. So uh, also that was supported by the World Health Organization who recognized that the problems that were, that were being um, affecting um, these, these countries. So what we saw was that there was long waiting times uh, to see a physician. 
Um, me being an ophthalmologist, um, I saw many patients, for example, coming to my clinic um, who, go, who are going blind because of complications of diabetes. All right, this is a preventable blindness. And um, that, that is a serious problem, you know? The cost, right, of, of health care. Believe it or not, you know, it costs us, you know? From the time you hit in there, then you have another test. Um, there were uh, several protocols with regards to accessing the facilities. So all, all of these are challenges and complications that we had to face. So of course, we, we, we looked at um, many countries try taxing these foods um, which, which, which um, accelerate chronic diseases, um, ch lifestyle changes, dietary changes, exercise. So we, we saw telemedicine as being able to afford support because there was a reduced waiting time uh, when you use telemedicine. It was affordable, uh, it was accessible, and uh, the potential to document um, the records and that many times the patient looks for the records and they have to wait six months to get a report. But if it is digitalized, you just uh, print it out and you know, just email it and you could get it. So, so all of this telemedicine supported the, the sustainable development goals. As, so the objective, um, like I said before, was supported by the ITU, and I will mention them again, to demonstrate the importance of telemedicine in the management of diabetes and hypertension, making healthcare more accessible and affordable in small island developing states. The, in terms of the research methodology, the research was a randomized controlled intervention study of two diagnostic groups, diabetics and hypertensive patients. So we classified them into subgroups, patients who had diabetes, patients who had hypertension, patients who had both illnesses, diabetes and hypertension, and a control group. So of course there were inclusion and exclusion criteria. These patients could not have um, been in an acute stage, it could not have been complicated in order for us to accept them into the, the project. Uh, they were educated on, on telemedicine. They were also educated on, on diabetes and hypertension. Uh, consent was sought from them in order to conduct the studies. We also sought um, approvals from the, the Medical Board Ethics Committee of Dominica. And um, so then we went on to um, do the consultations, um, three consultations. So the study consisted of a heterogeneous mixture, including indigenous groups, 25% of youth, 52% of middle-aged, and 22% of geriatric patients. And if you note there, females, 79% are participated, and only 21% of the males. So of course, the, the, the males are already running away from you know, being healthy. So we did the anthropometric measurements, blood pressure, blood sugar, connectivity, and overall patient satisfaction for the use of te the technology was uh, analyzed. So what we, what we sought to do was to find out from each one of these groups whether they were satisfied with the telemedicine. And unanimously, um, patients were satisfied with use, the use of telemedicine because of all the advantages we spoke about, how it was affordable to them. And they had waiting times that were very extended waiting times, sometimes it was six months. And because of that, they were able to see a physician online. They were able to see a specialist consultation. They had a specialist consultation. Um, so they, and not only that, but um, the availability of cell phones. They, not everybody had a cell phone, but most persons who, who, had, digital, um, who had a digital device was able to um, be satisfied with, with the service um, for, for telemedicine. And also, what we found that patients, if you lived five minutes from the hospital, or you lived an hour or two hours from the hospital, you had no advantage over the other, because it, the, the consultation was online. You, you know, so not because the person lived in town that they could have said so. So that was um, part of the research finding. So as part of our recommendations, we saw the need to upgrade the broadband services. Right, for improved connectivity of telemedicine services, 
and incorporate satellites and GPS services. Um, many times with the hurricanes, uh, you have your networks, you know, totally destroyed, and then you have to be able to support that system. We see the problem with um, fuel prices ra um, raising the um, power outages. You have all of these things, so you need to upgrade that. And uh, many times you try to assist, but sometimes <coughs> per your larceny, if you use solar, somebody takes your, your the, the solar devices. So, you know, these are some of the challenges. So there must be a need to increase accessibility and availability of e-health medical devices. What we found um, was that uh, if the patients had access to a device where we could get the data at their home, they have a blood pressure kit at their home, or an SPO2 machine at their home, um, that information could be uploaded on the, the, the network, and um, it was, we were able to take decisions based on that. Um, there must be a greater public-private partnership. Many times you hear they say that um, you have 10,000 persons are ill, but there's gross underreporting because the government system has their statistics, but they do not sometimes get statistics from the private sector. So there's gross underreporting for that. So there's a need to inc increase advocacy um, and education in telemedicine. In conclusion, we saw that telemedicine was an effective medium in the management of chronic diseases in small island developing states, especially during the COVID pan pandemic. Uh, we also saw that the digitalization of health care optimized and aided the response in diagnosis of the disease and, and monitoring. Um, we saw that overall, patients were satisfied um, with the use of um, telemedicine in managing the, the their disease. But of course, with every good, there are some limitations to, to the technology, of course. We saw that there was inadequate connectivity in certain areas. Dominica is highly mountainous, so sometimes you, you connect it, and then you're waiting to reconnect, and you know, so you have this. So we also saw that there was a lack of um, medical de monitoring devices at, in the homes. So we need to get devices into the, the, home, the, the homes of the, the, the older persons. And inadequate education on telemedicine services, on, on chronic disease management. Um, sometimes there were distractions. Sometimes you on the a call with your physician and your child passing at the back or some. So, you know, and of course there were some privacy issues. Although we use a HIPAA certified um, network, um, there's still some private issues that need to be addressed with this. And of course, um, there's cultural taboo. Certain persons who said, you know, they want, prefer a rub, you know, than, than being online. So we had to deal with this. So we basically, we're saying that um, we're hoping that we can get greater collaboration with other organizations to partner to, to push this, this technology. And I think that um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity in, in telemedicine. And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Henry, for again uh, sharing the key role that telemedicine plays uh, in advancing digital health. And really appreciate the statement that you opened with, the health of the region is the wealth of the region. We also saw the need for availability and access to devices, increased advocacy, increased connectivity, and some other issues regarding privacy and how best we can address those. Thank you very much. And we'll now move to our fourth presenter, Dr. David. The floor is yours. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, All right, so thanks once again. Um, my presentation is on the topic, improving resilience in developing countries, digital health provision through telemedicine ecosystem against pandemics, epidemics, and natural disasters in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, let me just say that the presentation will follow this outline. The research team will be introduced the introduction of the research, the research methodology, 
research findings and outcomes, some recommendations and conclusions will be made. Now, the research team is very multidisciplinary. Uh, it's made of Edward C. Edu, um, University of Ghana, um, a, a development economist, myself, a sustainability expert from Brunel University, uh, with a Chen, who is uh, an innovation expert in health sectors, and then Shango from Sweden, who is also uh, a computer IT expert. Now, I must say that the global health shocks, including the COVID-19, have become you know, rampant in the past decades. And the socioeconomic uh, consequences of such events um, have been more dire in developing countries, considering the fact that in developing countries, um, there are issues relating to infrastructure, um, issues relating to finance constraints, etc. So it really impacted on developing countries. And, and we've been arguing that uh, a telemedicine ecosystem can be leveraged to expand health services through uh, 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 particularly uh, making sure that the vulnerable in society are actually given access to such type of you know, uh, technologies. And we actually aim at examining the state of telemedicine ecosystem in sub-Saharan Africa, and then also assess the challenges with digital health provision with relevant stakeholders during and post the COVID-19 pandemic from vulnerable groups' uh, perspective. And then also to carry out in-depth review of secondary data and exploratory approaches in sub-Saharan Africa uh, broadly and Ghana to be specific. Fourth, to actually undertake um, deep dive studies on the utilization of telemedicine and digital health to improve resilience to pandemic events and also uh, to make sure that uh, it, it can also be used to improve issues relating to natural disasters. And then fifth, to propose some recommendations to uh, develop a telemedicine ecosystem to enable better use of digital health provision in sub-Saharan Africa. The research is, was done in four phases. So the first phase basically looked at you know, selection of the location for the research. And, and then we moved on secondly to actually, con I mean, get the sampling framework right and then also design the survey instruments, and then also making sure that we train enumerators and pretest our survey instruments. And then with that, we were able to conduct some key stakeholder interviews, uh, organize some workshops and focus group interviews, uh, and then also some focus group interactions to make sure that we get a first-hand understanding of exactly what um, uh, uh, it is with regards to the state of the telemedicine ecosystem in Ghana. Fourth, once we were able to collect the data, uh, we happened to transcribe it and then also clean the data, uh, making sure that we are able to analyze the data and then make some observations for workshops and then also dissemination activities. Now, the key stakeholders in this particular you know, research are uh, people from different backgrounds, but mainly in the healthcare sector. So we are looking at, in Ghana, the National Health Insurance Authority, which is the main organization responsible for, you know, health insurance in Ghana at the state level. Uh, so we actually contacted experts on, 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 in that particular institution. Also, Ministry of Health experts were also considered. Ministry of Communication, and then the Ghana Health Service. And then also the private sector, where you know, the telcos are present and also healthcare NGOs are also present in there, we're also considering. Uh, we also identify some you know, vulnerable communities where we've already conducted some stakeholder engagement activities there. So those particular group of people were also considered. And then also we went further to identify the vulnerable groups in you know, remote communities where we think that you know telemedicine can be the game changer for them. So we went down there to actually identify them. Oh. Now, 
this this life looks very tiny. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I must say that um, I can still go ahead. Uh, we had two broad categories when it came to, you know, our research findings. The first is the research finding which actually looked at um, the objectives of the research. And then also uh, we actually, the second category was on uh, uh, the areas or the aspects of the research that we think that were pertaining to the objectives. We actually did not, you know, uh, consider them, but we found them very useful. So we were able to, you know, uh, uh, pick those aspects as well. So those were areas that we considered. Now, with the objectives, we had some broad themes that we considered. The first theme was on the issue of the state of the telemedicine ecosystem in, in Ghana. Now, with that, we observed that the telemedicine ecosystem is at the nascent stage, but very promising, in the sense that uh, there is that interconnectivity at the district level, and to the extent that it is moving even to the urban communities. So it was something that is worth considering. And then also, we observed that uh, there is that diffusion of telemedicine in, 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 uh, in the urban, peri-urban communities, um, it's, it, there is more room for improvement when it comes to those in rural communities. And this is mainly because of, you know, the, the voice notes, the video calls, et cetera, that, you know, uh, over the years, software technologists have been able to develop to be able to get these things through. And what interactions with um, some community members uh, in, in, in remote communities show very clearly that without telemedicine, they wouldn't have known much about the COVID-19 pandemic. And so it was something that, you know, uh, uh, the, the community members actually were appreciative of. And one thing that I think was the success factor in this case is the fact that um, there is that penetration, obviously, in these uh, uh, urban, peri-urban communities. Um, and, and then also there is that trust the fact that when information is being communicated from the health professional through a digital system to the recipient in the remote community, that particular individual and that vulnerable society believes that the information is positive and it is good. And so this is something that came out very clearly in the work. And then also the convenience that you are in the house and you're able to get information was something that is worth you know, uh, 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 considering. Now, there are challenges in the, the sector. And the fact that there is poor network connect connectivity, and I think during the introduction section, uh, it was made mention. The fact that, you know, the poor network as a result of road and telecommunication, where you will find out that uh, during road constructions in these rural communities, there is a lot of distraction of telecommunication cables, et cetera, and this actually affects connectivity and makes it very expensive for the telcos to actually invest in these communities. And then also the fact that there is low literacy with regards to ICT in these rural communities. Um, and, 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 and then also for the professionals, uh, not many of them actually understand how to administer you know, healthcare services via uh, the uh, digital means. And so some of these things also came up because you see people who actually have the expertise with regards to IT, know how to communicate with IT, but when it comes to communicating from a health perspective, it became very difficult to do. Um, I must say that the other aspect that we identified is the need to upskill telemedicine in rural communities because once it is done, uh, issues relating to OPD consultations, for instance, emergency issues, etc. all of these issues will actually be addressed effectively. Um, there are tropical diseases that with telemedicine, perhaps better sensitization and education can actually be given to make sure that these things are done. Now, in conclusion, we say that telemedicine is an efficient tool to, for the delivery of healthcare, especially in marginalized communities, and this should actually be integrated into the healthcare system 
in Ghana and also to supplement the quality of service delivery in the country. Um, we, we, we actually encourage collaboration between healthcare policymakers and academia to actually you know, develop a telemedicine policy that perhaps may be useful, will serve as a guide for, 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 for ad, uh, administering telemedicine. The upscale aspect is also very key. ICT clinics can be a measure, that, a, a tool that can be used in upscaling. And then also sensitization on the need to mainstream you know, tele, telemedicine into healthcare delivery system. The government must also cons, consult and then also design and implement uh, appropriate training modules on telemedicine to build capacity amongst healthcare professionals. Uh, the next step, we think that data governance modules and their importance in telemedicine cannot be overemphasized. Uh, uh, it is really important to look at that. And this must be coupled with the ethical implications of telemedicine in Africa. Uh, the need to also you know, investigate and de develop strategies, skills, and capacity required to actually upskill telemedicine in Africa is also very pertinent in, in this regard. Um, for, so artificial intelligence, big data, for instance, can be, be actually leveraged to actually predict healthcare issues and then also encourage resource allocation in the healthcare sector. Uh, there are good practices elsewhere, for instance, United Kingdom, Sweden, etc., that perhaps Africans can actually learn from. And so the need to actually investigate some of these good practices and see how they can be appropriated in Africa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. David. Indeed, you've highlighted some key areas, but I would like to start with the sharing of good practices, the sharing of success factors, what has worked, what hasn't worked, so that we can learn from these experiences from the different countries and the different contexts. You also highlight the need to use the different types of digital technology like AI in terms of scaling up, in terms of uh, facilitating this kind of telemedicine approach that we're trying to emphasize uh, to facilitate uh, extending and delivering resilient health systems for everyone and to all populations. We're running out of time, but I uh, would like to open the floor in case there are questions. There's time for two or three questions. Uh, and in case our participants who are online, if there are any questions, please feel free again to put them in the chat. But in case there's a question in the room, the floor is open. Please go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Merci, Madame. Uh, je veux m'excuser auprès de l'ensemble des participants. Uh, je suis Jonas Cyril Djondé, uh, venant de la Côte d'Ivoire. Et ici, je représente euh, Monsieur le ministre Amadou Koulbali, ministre de la Communication et de l'économie numérique en Côte d'Ivoire, dans la région ouest africaine. Et nous sommes une délégation de cinq personnes. J'ai bien aimé l'ensemble des présentations et on souhaiterait vous dire infiniment merci d'avoir invité la Côte d'Ivoire à ce forum. Je souhaiterais, par votre biais, euh, revenir sur une question d'ordre général. Premièrement, avant de rentrer dans deux ou trois questions spécifiques. La première, euh, j'ai vu dans la cartographie des études sélectionnées euh, qu'il y avait beaucoup d'études, mais je n'ai pas vu des études en lien direct avec l'alphabétisation, puisque je constate que l'ensemble des pays africains, plus ou moins, en grande majorité, ont des problèmes euh, d'alphabétisation euh, en milieu rural, et ce qui empêche très souvent l'adoption de, de nouvelles technologies puisque de, de plus en plus nous parlons d'alphabétisation numérique. Est-ce que c'est faire exprès du fait qu'il n'y ait pas dans la cartographie des études sélectionnées, euh, des études en lien avec euh, l'analyse de l'adoption des outils euh, technologiques, euh, en lien direct avec les compétences numériques des populations Deuxième point qui concerne essentiellement la Côte d'Ivoire, euh, on a besoin de retourner aussi avec une réponse. C'est que j'ai vu dans la cartographie qu'il n'y a pas eu de réponse venant de la Côte d'Ivoire. Est-ce que c'est parce que lorsque vous lancez euh, cette étude, euh, il n'y a pas eu de soumission 
ou bien le ministère n'a pas reçu de documents relativement au dossier d'appel à, à, à candidature pour cette étude-là Ça, c'était les deux premières questions d'ordre général. Rapidement, pour l'ensemble des études, euh, j'ai vraiment très bien apprécié, puisque ça concerne un peu notre pays. Nous avons la volonté de lancer une inclusion sociale, mais surtout, euh, nous sommes actuellement en approche de la couverture maladie universelle qui, après cinq ans, est en train d'être externalisée, développée en Côte d'Ivoire. Ma question, c'est, est-ce que dans l'ensemble des études, et ça concerne toutes les équipes de chercheurs ici présentes, euh, vous avez introduit une variable intermédiaire qui est l'analyse des compétences numériques des cibles parce que j'ai vu qu'il y a eu beaucoup d'analyses relativement à l'infrastructure, relativement euh, 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 à l'accessibilité. Mais est-ce qu'on a eu à apprécier le niveau de compétences numériques des cibles qui peut être un facteur de succès ou un facteur négatif dans l'adoption de la technologie Et ma dernière question concerne la satisfaction de l'utilisation de la télémédecine qui en est ressortie pour l'ensemble des études. Euh, je souhaiterais connaître exactement les critères de satisfaction. Est-ce que c'est l'accessibilité, c'est le coût, c'est la guérison du patient Est-ce que le fait d'avoir utilisé la médecine, il se sent beaucoup plus apte à, à être en bonne santé plus rapidement Donc les critères de satisfaction, c'est important. Ça nous permet après de mieux apprécier le déploiement de l'outil et de mieux le vulgariser. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, the delegate from Ivory Coast, and uh, we really appreciate your participation and being here with us uh, today. Uh, I would like to call upon one of our presenters who will take some of the questions that you have presented. Uh, Dr. Lawal, would you like to go first, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for those um, questions. But let me say this. To be honest with you, I was challenged with 10 minutes to actually present all of the work we've done. We are comprised of about 13. Like I said earlier, um, with, with um, um, contributions from United Kingdom, from um, USA, Yale School of Medicine, um, from University of um, Brighton, and of course from Nigeria, then of course from the industry. And we produced a lot of four papers. Some of the things you've mentioned here, actually in the four papers, we have published already. But let me say something that we realized in, as part of our outcome in this um, um, research project. You see, you need broadband penetration to start with, and also education. Then we realize when you have broadband penetration to rural areas, you are addressing United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4. It talks about quality education. You get it. Quality education through education helps e-education, helps address issues of illiteracy. Because part of the challenge we encountered in the field was illiteracy. Illiteracy even to even understand what COVID is all about. Illiteracy to even understand how to prevent preventable diseases. Illiterate from the fact that you need to, what, what it takes to like even cover yourself with Max and all of that. We saw all of these challenges. But for us, like I said, our papers have been published with the approval of ITU, and you could see in all of those who captured. And one more important thing that we also saw, saw aside the issue of uh, illiteracy, was also, and um, you know, illiteracy education of the populace, is issue of power. You get it? Aside even urban areas, you have rural areas that do not have any form of civilization other than, you know, having to move there with mobile, um, a car, a truck, you get it, with our VSAT system. Now, in the first case, we're using Kimita flat panel U7 terminal, where we had to deploy a 5 kVA inverter solution to the battery system. So from battery, you have an inverter using 24 volt DC that you know um, 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 brings about AC. Then in the internal hardware equipment, in the BUCs and all of that, it is as, at the same time converting AC to DC again. For us, this was needless. 
as part of our feedback and all of that, Kimita also rolled out concurrently the U8 terminal. In the U8 terminal, the, the iDirect BUC system was inbuilt with DC provisions. So you don't even need inverter anymore. A 5KBA inver inverter goes for over $1,000. So from the DC of your mobile car, you can power your telemedicine equipment at an affordable rate. So that was why we recommended issue of, you know, hardware designers to put into consideration issue of utilization of green power because these rural areas will try to address with e-health facility or start light for digital health do not have power solutions. So let's find a cost effective way of making power available. I think this is very key to us that look, either internally as a researcher, you convert what you buy from AC to DC to avoid the use of inverter or we make recommendations again to suppliers of e-health telemedicine facilities as captured in our outcome that we should produce equipment that are power friendly. You get it, particularly for rural areas, not in the urban area where you have, you know, so in fact, inadequacy, inadequacy of power just as represented in developing nations, like also my nation. Sorry to say, power issue is still a very big issue, which is also part of sustainable development goal and all of that. Thank you very much, sir. A lot of our recommendations, a lot that we can talk about within 10 minutes is too small for us to showcase all that we do. But part of those outcomes has been shared in it about four journal paper publications and conference proceedings. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lawal. Uh, we shall be closing our session shortly because uh, we're running out of time. But uh, most importantly, would like to remind all of us that our presenters are still with us in the room. So if there are more questions, if there's need for more clarification, please reach out at any time and this information will be shared uh, with everyone. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and we'll now close this session and take a lunch break and we'll be back in an hour's time. Thank you very much for your attention. Join me in also thanking Caroline for excellent moderation. Caroline, thank you. Bonjour, enchanté. Euh, on arrive. On arrive avec vous. Bon, il n'y a pas de problème. 